Welcome to the Money Collier Report. I'm Money Collier. Before we get to the message today, I'd like to remind everybody that you can get a copy of my latest book titled, It Demands Nothing, But It Gives All, The Gospel of Jesus Christ. I have a link to this book in the description box in this video. I'll also pin one in the comment section below. Now hear the authoritative word of God. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not. Therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Those are the words of Christ from Matthew chapter 10, verses 28. Through 33. As you can see from the above verses, God controls this creation. God absolutely predestinates all things. Nothing can happen apart from God's almighty, sovereign determination. Nothing can come to pass without the causation of God's almighty will. The Bible says, and I quote, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. End quote. Psalm 33, verses 8 through 11. You see, a man does not simply die in this world. If anyone dies, then it was God that killed that man. Now I know that may shock some of you, especially if you've been listening to some of these modern hucksters that call themselves preachers. But listen, the Bible correctly says, and I quote, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up, end quote. It's First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. Notice that physical death in this life is not the end. Some may wish it was, but it's not. There's a resurrection coming. No disease can touch you without God's will. And if God wants a disease to kill you, then nothing in this universe can stop that from happening. It therefore follows that you should fear God rather than some disease or some man or even some devil. Not only can God kill your body in this world, but God can condemn your soul to everlasting damnation, to which there is no end of punishment. The Bible has concluded that all men, you see, all those naturally descending from Adam, are sinners, and the wages of sin is death. Yet those who believe the gospel of Jesus Christ and confess their sins and have faith in Christ alone, those will be saved. For Jesus is their surety and advocate and legal representative before God Almighty. Those that believe the gospel are justified before God by faith alone. Their sins are forgiven. They are covered with the saving righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. Their sins have been washed away by His precious blood. And though they may die in this world, they live and enjoy the glory of eternal salvation in heaven forever. Jesus truly says, and I quote, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? End quote. John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. Those that believe the gospel are protected and preserved by God Almighty. They are in covenant with God Almighty. 
Consider who it is we are speaking of, beloved. We are talking about the all-powerful and all-knowing God of creation who has numbered each hair upon your head. The God of the universe that controls and governs all things and events to the point that not even a small bird can fall to the ground without God's willing it. This is the God we speak of, the God of the Bible. Those that believe the gospel, those that rely on Christ alone for salvation, they are the apple of God's eye. See Psalm 17, verse 8. And nothing can snatch them away, beloved. Jesus says, and I quote, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. End quote. Those are gospel promises, beloved, and they give comfort to those that believe them. You see, the Bible is God's everlasting word, and it has always taught that God preserves his saints. The Bible says, and I quote, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, end quote. Psalm 32, verse 7. Again, the Bible says, and I quote, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off, end quote. Psalm 37, verse 28. Now earlier we noted that the Bible says there is a resurrection coming. This is true. There's also a judgment coming. The Bible says, quote, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. End quote. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Now the Holy Spirit may be convicting some of you right now telling you of your sins, warning you of the danger and damnation that's coming for the wicked. Now pay attention to this. The Bible says, and I quote, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. End quote. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. Now I'll tell you the truth. If you are afraid of going to hell, then you better repent from your sins and flee to Christ alone for salvation. Confess your sins to God and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, quote, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, end quote. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid due to this coronavirus. People fear their loved ones or even themselves may contract this disease and die. Such misery, fear, and death are simply the results of Adam's fall. The Bible says, quote, for the wages of sin is death, end quote. Romans 6.23 But now look to the gospel of Jesus Christ and be comforted. The Bible says, quote, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. End quote. Romans 5, verses 6 through 9. The gospel tells us that Christ died for us. He is our precious substitute. Jesus expiated our sins. This means that Jesus took away the punishment for our sins. He took the punishment in our place. He satisfied the law of God for us. Jesus propitiated the wrath of God for us. This means that Jesus pacified God's wrath, turning it away from us, and he took it upon himself. Now, our guilt was charged to Christ's account, laid upon him, while his perfect righteousness was credited to our account freely. His righteousness was imputed to us. 
When God gives us faith, we receive the perfect saving righteousness of Jesus Christ. This covering righteousness, it justifies us before God. We are forgiven and our legal status is changed from guilty to just the very moment we believe the gospel. Yes, there is much trouble in this life, but Jesus says, and I quote, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, end quote. John chapter 14, verse 1. Those that believe the gospel are forgiven, justified, and saved. The Bible says, quote, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, end quote. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Although bad things happen in this life, the Bible comforts us when it says, quote, All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose, end quote. Romans 8, 28. Because God Almighty is the sovereign ruler of this creation, He controls and determines whatsoever comes to pass. This means that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Listen to what the Bible says and be comforted. The Bible says, quote, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, end quote. Romans 8, verses 31 through 39. Amen.